the GNS3 community is fantastic. GNS3 community members are constantly adding new appliances to the GNS3 marketplace and contributing labs and other things that make our lives as network engineers a lot easier. Recently, a TACAX appliance with graphical user interface has been made available to the GNS3 community. I want to thank Christian for his contribution. He posted a message in the GNS3 community on the 29th of June 2018 saying that he's created this GNS3 appliance. It's essentially a TACAX appliance with graphical user interface. It's based on Alpine Linux and can be used within GNS3. The device configuration is shown here, including the SSH credentials, which are root and password 1234, the MySQL database credentials of root and TACAX, and the web interface credentials of TAC GUI and password ABC123. This TACAX server has an easy to use graphical user interface, which is shown here. Now, AJ commented about this appliance. AJ is a moderator in the GNS3 community, but in addition, AJ has made that appliance available in the GNS3 marketplace. So if you go to gns3.com, click on Marketplace, click on Appliances, and search for TACAX, you'll find the TACAX GUI, or TACAX Graphical User Interface, in the GNS3 marketplace. This is a free access control server for network devices. It's based on the work done by these gentlemen. So I'm gonna click download to download the appliance to my local computer. In this example, I'm using GNS3 on a Mac, but the process is very similar if you're using Windows. So I'm gonna to go to file in GNS3, import appliance, and I'm going to select the TACAX graphical user interface appliance and click open. Now I'm told once again that this is a free TACAX server. It's gonna be available under the guest category. I'm gonna click next. It's recommended that this appliance run on the GNS3 VM. In this example, I'm running GNS3 version 2.1.4, so it's a slightly old, so it's a slightly older release of GNS3, but I'm running it within VMware Fusion on a Mac. So I'm gonna click next. I'm told that the server requirements are okay. Click next. Now notice I'm missing files. This TAC plus QCOW2 file is missing. So I'm gonna select that and click download to download the file. I'm redirected to a Google Drive that belongs to Christian. I'm gonna download the file by clicking download. I'm told that the file is too large for Google to scan for viruses. Do I wanna download it? I'm gonna say yes, download anyway. The file is now downloaded to my local computer. So you need to wait for that file to download. And once it's downloaded, you'll be able to import it into GNS3. File is about 153 meg in size. So you simply need to wait for the file to download. Once it's downloaded, you can click refresh in GNS3 and hopefully it'll find the file. If it doesn't, you can click import and browse to where the file is downloaded and click open to import it. I'm not gonna do that. I'm simply gonna click next to install the TACAX GUI TACAX server. The file is then uploaded to the GNS3 VM. I'm gonna leave QMU settings at default and click next. A summary of information is displayed. I can see that the adapter type is E1000. One adapter is used, one gig of RAM is used, console type is Telnet, KVM is allowed but not required for this appliance. I'm gonna click next. Now again, the credential information is shown here. I suggest you copy that and store that in a file somewhere so that you've got those details for when you need to reference them to log into the device. I'm gonna click finish. TACAX GUI is now installed. So under end devices, installed appliances, I should be able to search for TACAX and there you go. I can now drag the TACAX server onto the GNS3 workspace and it's now available. What I'm gonna do now is build a topology. 
I'm going to add an Ethernet switch to the GNS3 topology and run that on the GNS3 VM. I'm also going to add a Cisco IOS V router. You could use a different router if you wanted to. This is not required, but I'm going to add a NAT device to my topology to act as a DHCP server. This device uses a Linux console, but to access the web interface, you need a web browser. So I'm going to drag a web term device into the topology. This device gives me a web browser, which will allow me to access the TACAC server. TACAC server only has a CLI. In other words, it uses a Linux command line interface. I'll connect the devices in the topology. A very simple topology. I'll start them up. You can make your topology more complex or make it pretty. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm simply going to show you how to get this appliance working in GNS3. So my devices are connected as follows. Very basic topology. What I'm going to do on the TACX server is open up a console. Now going back to my login information, username is root, password is 1234. So root 1234. I have config. I can see that the appliance already has an IP address that it received from the NAT cloud. So the NAT cloud is acting as a DHCP server and has allocated an IP address to this appliance. I can ping google.com as an example. That's not required. You could use a router as a DHCP server if you preferred. On the web term, I'm going to open up a console. Now in this example, I'm using a Mac. So I'm using chicken of the VNC. VNC would be used on a Windows computer. IFconfig shows me that no IP address has been allocated here. So I'm going to edit Etsy network interfaces with Nano. Nano is a simple text editor. What I'm going to do is edit these two lines, uncomment them, control X to exit, yes to save. So basically, I've edited Etsy network interfaces and I've uncommented these two lines. Now that I've done that, I'm going to close the console, turn off the device and start it up again and open up another console. And what we should see is that we have an IP address on this device, which I do have. So the NAT cloud is allocated an IP address to the web term client. My TACAC server once again has an IP address of 192.168.122.105. So on the web term client, I'm going to open up Firefox and browse to 192.168.122.105. I'm told that the connection is not secure. That's okay. Add an exception, confirm the security exception, and notice I get a TACAX GUI login prompt. Username here is TAC GUI password ABC123. So TAC GUI ABC123. I'm going to click sign in and allow Firefox to remember that username and password. Okay, so there you go. I've now got the TACAC server integrated in a GNS3 topology. I've got a web term client connecting to that TACAC server and I can log in. So as an example, under users, I could create a user here called user1. Password I'll set to Cisco. I'm going to use clear text. Add this to the default user group. Enable password, I'll set to Cisco, clear text, password, and click add user. So this user account has now been added. Before I can test this, I need to add a router. So I need to add my router's IP address, which in this example, I'll set to 200. Now I will need to configure this router to use TACX. But for the moment, I'll just set the host name and configure an IP address on the router, 122.200 slash 24. That should be able to ping 
the TACAC server, which has IP address 105. And there you go. So the router has IP connectivity to the TACAC server. Now, one thing I haven't done here is configure a device group name. So before I do that, what I'll do is create a group. So I'm just gonna call this GNS3 devices. Set this as the default group. TACAC server will be Cisco. Enable password will be Cisco. I'm not using encryption in this example. So I'll create that GNS3 devices group. That's under TACAX devices, device groups. Under devices, what I'll do now is add the router. So router one, device IP address is 192.168.122.200. TACAX key is Cisco. Enable password is Cisco. I'm not gonna use encryption. Device group is GNS3 devices and I'm gonna click add device. Now something really important here is once you've made your changes, you need to click apply changes, but very important, make sure that you uncheck this make backup after applying. If you don't do that, this appliance is not going to work. So make sure that you uncheck make backup after applying and then click apply to apply your configuration. If you don't do that, it's not gonna work. But notice here we can see device configuration for the GNS3 device that we've created. The next step is to configure the router for integration with the TACAC server.